Hello and welcome to Musical Musings, a place where musicians at St. Thomas the Apostle Hollywood muse about music. Today's musician is Leslie Kaplan, a fun and fabulous soprano in the St. Thomas Choir. So I'm very excited today because we have a very special guest. Her name is Leslie Kaplan, and she's an extraordinary soprano, longtime parishioner at St. Thomas the Apostle. So everyone, please welcome Leslie Kaplan. Hi, Leslie. Hey, how's everybody? <laughs> well, I can't speak for everyone, but I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Leslie? I'm, I'm much better now, you know, much better that I'm getting my exercise program going again. Yeah, making me feel alive, if you will. Keep those endorphins going. Yes. Yes, definitely. that's key. It's key right now. Yeah. So, Leslie, I got a bunch of questions for you today. Um, uh -oh. The first being, um, how long have you been a parishioner at St. Thomas? Ooh, I had to think about that. And I would say I was a, uh, the first time I stepped foot in the church was. I would say the end of 93, maybe the summer of 93, 94. That's the part that's foggy. I'm not really sure. Um, but let's just say since 1994. That's, that's a long time. Wow. So you're coming up on, what, 30? It'll be 30 years in, <laughs> in four years. Couple, yeah. That's incredible. Like that. Yeah, that is a long time. Yeah. It is a long time. Um, and when did you join the choir? Were you a choir member right away or did it take a while? Yeah. So what got me to even, uh, cause religion was not really in my household. My mom was a scarred and charred Catholic and my dad was a Methodist. So, you know, they had completely different, you know, religious ideas and they weren't super strict, but anyway, so they never even baptized me. So the interesting thing was uh, my, my husband at the time had gone to church and gotten confirmed and invited me. He said, come on to Easter. So we went to Easter and got stuck behind a pillar because, you know, Easter always gets super full. And, uh, but the music was so glorious. I was just, wow. This, I was so impressed uh, by the glorious live music. And I complimented the director at the time, and uh, he said, oh yeah, you liked it? Why don't you join the choir? <laughs> you never heard me sing, and I just, so I thought that was really hilarious. Um, but I did end up uh, taking him up on that challenge. Uh, maybe a couple months later, I showed up at a choir rehearsal on a Thursday night and uh, uh, worked with the altos. And uh, it was probably one of the best things I ever did. I, and I ended up joining the church after that. So I learned to read music that way because I was not, you know, classically trained, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I had a musical background with my dad. Um, he, he was a musician and uh, encouraged me to sing as a child. And I'd done kid choirs and things like that in school, but <clears throat> nothing, nothing really formal until uh, you know, I got that 30 years training in uh, singing liturgical music and expanding to other choirs from there. So, yeah. What did, your, what, kind of, what did your dad do with music? So he was an entertainer, basically. Um, he just toured a lot, uh, but before he married my mom, he was kind of like one of those teen heartthrob types from the 1950s. Uh, he was on a very small local TV show ca called Teenage Barn, <laughs> which was in upstate New York and Albany. And uh, he and his sister, Carla, would play music and sing harmony um, as a regular act on the show. And I actually tried to Google it to see, you know, if I could find anything about it. And I did find the show, but I couldn't find any footage. Of course, I didn't really dig hard enough. And maybe I will. And apparently there's a scrapbook with all the information in there that I need to get from my dad. But, um, that's it all. That's how it all started. He was, you know, he's making money. He was a pro at it with his sister and 
they encouraged me to sing as a little kid and so I always loved it you know but again nothing really formal so yeah. you mentioned that your dad was doing that in New York is that where you're from yeah I was born in upstate New York yep yeah, in Glens Falls a little town called Glens Falls New York and, and my when parents did you come out here so my parents um, decided to move when I was two years old to San Diego. So I grew up there and uh, moved up to LA, um, you know, after high school to go to fit um, fashion school. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, before we get into your, your, what you do professionally and stuff, um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask uh, what other music groups you sing in or play in? What do you do outside of St. Thomas Choir? Yeah, so uh, right now it's just St. Thomas, uh, but uh, I did sing with Vox Femina for close to nine years. Really enjoyed that. Um, took a year off, thought I was gonna be traveling a lot this year, which is why I didn't sign on for 2019-20. or 2019-20. Um, and I kind of made a good call considering everything's been shut down and even the existing singers, uh, you know, so sad. Um, nobody's singing together anymore. So it was probably the right year to, uh, take a hiatus, but you know, when everything comes back online and we're able to sing together and that there's a vaccine and a, a way to safely sing together, um, you know, I'll probably go back and sing with them again, you know, audition. So besides being an alto and a soprano at St. Thomas, what else, how, how have you served at St. Thomas other than in the choir? So I was on the vestry. Um, that was enjoyable. Um, I got to meet a lot of new people that I hadn't really, you know, uh, worked with before. Uh, and uh, I think that's it, really, just the choir and the vestry. Oh, well, um, oh, yeah, and I also was on the stewardship committee for, uh, for stewardship, which was, you know, uh, fundraising. And I was a captain for maybe two, two to three years. Um, and that was fun, you know, just spreadsheets, call people. And, you know, was and lead lead a team. That was fun. Um, I think I gave one talk during a stewardship. That's it, really. You've yeah. also uh, been a wrangler for us um, at our concerts, where you've harassed people to give donations. <laughs> oh well, that's part of fun. <laughs> You're really good. You're really good at it. I call it the gre <laughs> I call it the greeter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I just, you just sit up front, you make people feel welcome, you let them see right there the basket with the note, you gesture at it. Um, obviously, it's donation only, but we are nonprofit, so um, most people were happy to give something. You know, well, yeah, the music those, was always so glorious, and they're so happy that they did. Those that concerts are benefiting the music program, so... Well, your work yeah. on that front has been very helpful and very appreciated, of course. So you've been a, you've been a very active active parishioner at St. Thomas, no question. <laughs> yeah. the choir is one of the busiest busiest groups on on the campus for sure. So yeah. Um, in addition to that, you're already doing a lot of other great things. Um, so outside of St. Thomas, what do you do? What's what's your professional life been like? Yeah, so I'm an accountant, and uh, taxes is my uh, taxes are my specialty. Uh, small S corps, LLCs, uh, individuals. Um, I love doing it. I'll do it till the day I pass away. Uh, until I can't add numbers or work with technology, <laughs> I'll be doing it. I mean, if I win the lottery, I'll still do it. So <laughs> it's fun, you know. I mean, it's fun, but I I take it really seriously, and I love. Uh, helping everyone, especially artists and uh, new startups, people that have a lot of ambiguous uh, expenses and aren't really sure where to, where to place it. Uh, it's 
especially musicians, actors, directors, producers, people in the creative realm. Uh, I think I have a special knowledge because, uh, you know, I used to be a costumer in another life. <laughs> I have a pension coming at some point. Um, but just being able to do my own taxes way, you know, 20 years ago uh, and understanding what I needed, it, it opened up, you know, what's possible for other artists. So um, I seem to get, you know, lots of new clients, all referrals from people that they love and trust and that I've done a good job for. And, you know, so I'm really blessed that way. It's just keeps growing. <laughs> That's I'm busy. I'm, you know, busy right now, actually. Um, yeah. And tax season got pushed back to July 15th. So everybody has until July, which means my, my season has extended. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. Until July. <laughs> Not complaining though. Half the summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm working this summer. <laughs> yeah. Um, you you had mentioned that you worked as a costumer. What? So mm -hmm. you had gone to school to study fashion. Yes. And then yes. you were a costumer. So what was that? Yeah. Like? Yeah. So uh, so it was interesting. I you know when I graduated from Fitum, uh, I started my own small micro design firm, um, and sold to little stores. Uh, a lot of them in New York, uh, but some of them were, you know, Fred Siegel and uh, Bullocks. There used to be a store in the Beverly Center called Bullocks. I sold to them. And the most exciting thing was seeing my designs on their mannequins in the junior section. I was like, oh, oh this is that's before so cool. Wi-Fi. This is before Wi-Fi and everything. So it's before, not like, like you know, you could just social media it out. But I mean, I have a whole book of the things. But um, yeah, so I used to do that. And then I opened up a little store on Melrose. And then from there, uh, what did I do? Oh, and then I discovered uh, what it would be like designing for motion pictures, you know, through uh, videos, commercials, stuff like that, because other stylists and costumers would come in and ask me to make things like Mama Leone pizza aprons, because they needed six of them, because there was going to be pizza sauce <laughs> getting on them. And they needed uh, duplicates, triplicates, you know, up to six. And I realized, Hmm. And they were paying me really well and I had to get them done overnight. So I realized, Hmm, that might be another way to experiment without brick and mortar. Cause the store was tricky. You know, you're always depending on people coming in and I learned how to custom make things, clothing for people, costumes and clothing for people in my store. But, uh, you know, it was still tricky to make ends meet. It just always is with a really, really small company that, you know, I was mostly doing everything. Um, I had, I did have a few seamstresses that would, you know, cottage industry that worked out of their homes and, you know, so I'd be driving to each one of them at night, working at the store during the day and just trying to figure out how to tie it all together and, you know, pay the bills, you know, because unless you're really mass producing, um, or you're not charging enough, I, I basically I wasn't charging enough. So, um, anyway. So I discovered uh, a few costumers that needed tailors, on-set tailors. And I said, well, I can do this because they're not going to be asking for, you know, double-breasted suits being made on the spot. They're going to, you know, nip and tuck here and there. So I started doing that and uh, it just, one thing led to another. And, you know, I have a pretty big resume of all the people that I've worked with and all the jobs that I've done, um, all the celebrities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I do have a pension coming at some point from the customers union. Yay. Um, That's good news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but you know, um, it wasn't the best fit for me. I don't know. I just felt it's a lot of stress. There's a lot of stress. Um, you're not really designing the things you want to design. You're doing things for money and, and that's okay. You know, it's great for people that that's what they want to do. But I realized my love was adding up the receipts at the end of the job seriously so not yeah. not going to universal coming through you know ten thousand uh world war ii jackets that are super dusty and they're all crammed in at the top you know ten thousand square feet with costuming at you know universal or a lot of our there's many costume houses in la but that was a you know that's a staple for costumers to pull uh, wardrobe from 
and the light, I realized, you know, this is a big part of the job and I don't love that part. What do I like about this? I like, I like the math at the end of the day, <laughs> the part that nobody liked. And I said, well, then maybe I don't need to be doing this and I could be doing, I could work from the neck up and not be in the chiropractors, you know, twice a week. Right. Yeah. So many shopping bags everywhere. Yeah. And anyway, um, yeah, so I uh, found it. I found that's it. So Leslie, um, going, swinging back to music, um, do you have any favorite pieces, composers, hymns, any sort of music that we've done at St. Thomas um, or, and, or do you have any pieces that you would like us to do or hymns or? Yeah, so interesting you have incredible about. taste in music. You have incredible taste in music. Oh, thank so, you. Um, you know, I really thought long and hard about this and I cannot say exactly which composers I love the most or which pieces I love the most because it's like saying, well, what's your favorite color to me, right? How do you narrow it down to just one? So, um, you know, of course I do love, you know, the Renaissance period. I love that. Um, I mean, each, each one of the periods that broke, everything is, there's always something that's super standout-ish. Um, so I'm not going to say I love any particular one in particular, but I do love, um, I do love liturgical um, acapella pieces, um, you know, bird, um, pretty lazy. I mean, I know that's not really acapella, but. Um, Palestrina, Victoria. Palestrina, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, just because it's solely from the human, you know. Soul Something very out. special about acapella, right? I mean, yeah, that's where music originates. Really, it's from our bodies. Instruments are yeah. lovely and wonderful, but there, there's artifice involved in in their creation and their manipulation. Whereas the voice is totally organic. Yeah, I think it's just really prayerful. Um, it's just easy to meditate and really settle in when you hear something really calming and acapella and chant like um then again you know you get the, the big orchestra pieces and you know the organ and everything and it's super joyful and celebratory um i mean again i like it all but what could i live with on a desert island you know for you know 65 days if i only got one flavor it would probably be you know the acapella early music type pieces. that's really good to know you know, it's interesting. I was listening to an interview with uh, Reverend Kate Cress at St. James in the city here mm -hmm. on Wilshire. Um, she mm -hmm. was interviewing their music director, Canon Jim Bonamani. And um, she, she, Kate had asked Jim, um, what's, who's your favorite composer? And his answer I thought was interesting. He said, the composer that we're singing this Sunday. In other <laughs> words, Look at it. Yeah. That's a great answer because I kind of feel the same way too. It's like, you know, every Sunday you're falling in love with the piece you're doing. It's, yeah, yeah. You know, most pieces I think that we rehearse and work on, we fall in love with as we're doing them. And it's like, it's the best thing we're doing, you know, at the moment. Because yeah. <laughs> we're right in it. Yeah. 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 It's like taking a hike in a beautiful landscape, and every piece is its own landscape. You know, it's this gorgeous. It has its own nuances and subtleties that no other place has, and each one's special. It's hard to compare, you know. We we tend to do that with music. This is great music, right? And oh, this music's not so great. But it's like when you explore a piece, even a small little tiny, you know, gem of a piece. It's like it's it's just as gorgeous and fulfilling as a great big gigantic masterpiece in a way. I agree. Yeah, yeah. there's something to it. Yeah. Well. So Leslie, before we go, I was wondering if you might have anything you'd want to share with your friends at St. Thomas the Apostle while we're, while we're all away from each other. Is there anything you'd like to say? Yeah. Well, I miss you all. And uh, I miss hearing your singing voices and being together and catching up on your lives. Uh, I've seen some of your posts on Facebook, although I try not to be on Facebook too much. Um, but just basically, I hope we can all be together soon and that you're staying happy and being your best selves and getting creative and 
coming up with uh, your next move, you know, your next move on whatever that is that makes you the happiest person that you could be. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to follow us on social media for upcoming content. Until next time, God bless and take care.